Hi, Audra Slinky here from the Home Staging Resource. I just want to show you a quick video on how easy it is to create kind of a cool before and after shot that you can even use for your Facebook cover. So the first thing I'm going to do is get out of the homestagingresource.com and go right to P-I-C-M-O-N-K-E-Y, pickmonkey.com, my latest favorite photo editing site. And instead of editing the photo, I'm going to first create a collage because I want to put my before and after photos side by side. So I'm going to open my photos and find them. All right, so I chose a few photos from my list and I can see which ones really look the most dramatic. Next thing I'm going to do is go to the next tab down. You see there's four tabs here and go to layouts and find the side by side layout that I think will work well for me. And it'll probably be ducks in a row, and there's two. But I could, you know, if you had more than one, I could go square deal and, and go square. But since this is Facebook and I need it kind of long and narrow, I'm going to go ducks in a row, two. And there I am. And this tab lets you do some spacing, some corner rounding, a color background, a transparent background. You don't really need to worry about those too much. I'm going to go back to my photos and I'm going to pull my photos into this side by side and see if I can't get the most dramatic. This photo is larger than this photo so it's not really getting the whole photo. I don't really like that as much. So I need to resize this photo before uploading it again so I can get the whole effect. So here we go. I've got both photos up. It's a pretty dramatic Keep in mind they're squares, so they're not going to get the whole side of the photo, but this one did pretty good. So I like it, and I'm just going to save it to my computer. Now, once you've saved it to the computer, it's not enough. In fact, I was just on Pinterest an hour ago, and I saw somebody had a fantastic before and after kind of setting like this, and somebody else had kind of taken it and pinned it off of their story so all the traffic went to of the work that they did went to someone else's site who took the photo and people were pinning it from that site so it's really awful because you hate to go through the work have your beautiful before and after and then have people take it folk put it on their blog or their DIY section and then pinning and all the pinning traffic goes to them and not to you and the only reason why I knew it wasn't them is I saw a little piece of the website that that original work came from on the photo itself so it's really important for you to kind of watermark or mark this photo we're gonna do that by going back to pick monkey but now we have to go and get the photo that we just created as a whole so I'm gonna go to pick monkey and hit enter which will take me to the front page and I'm gonna edit that photo that we just created so now that I'm in the photo editor of PicMonkey, it's different than the collage because it lets us do a whole lot more cool things. We can crop, rotate, change the exposure, all sorts of things. And keep in mind, these are specifically designed for photos with people in it. So if you haven't yet taken a photo of yourself for business or work and really played with it, you really should. There's some amazing things you can do. I always say I really like all of the cross-processing, and I really like the wrinkle remover. Hello. Yes, I do want that on the photos of myself. But we're working with home, so we're not going to do that. What I will do is I will take the writing, and I will put that this was work done by my company, which is one thing that you all will want and need to do so that nobody can take your work. One thing that's cool about PicMonkey versus other photo editing, editing sites is they really do have a lot of choices when it comes to fonts. And as I've been working with it for the last I don't know, for a while, um, I notice they keep adding more, which I love. So I'm going to now pick a font, add text, and put my business name. So I recommend keeping the font simple. It's not about what you're saying necessarily, it's just about them knowing who you are and then keeping it consistent. So once you've got one, I'm going to paste another one in here. Oh, it won't let me copy and paste, so that's fine. I'm going to do another one. Add text. I remember exactly how I did it. And I'm going to put it side by side with the other one that I did. And then I'm just going to move it around to get it kind of consistent. 
and that looks good and that looks professional but there's more that you can do and this is why I like PicMonkey you can layer you can layer other images on top of this image and then merge your layers so I am going to add one more image and that is my certification image because I know that that matters and it's under this button overlays and there's a lot of cool overlays that you can choose one of my favorite overlays is done with just paper scrap if I want to like get a client's attention and do like a note on something like, hello by the way you know redesign 101 or whatever it is so you can do all sorts of cool banners and grave banners overlays that sort of thing but in this case it's my Facebook I'm gonna keep it pretty simple I'm gonna go to overlays and I'm gonna actually just upload my own certification logo so I'm gonna take that logo and I like the idea of putting it smack in the middle but you can do it any way you want kind of shows the way the work works. <laughs> um, so overall I'm happy with the way this looks and I'm just going to go ahead and save this. Combined the layers, save it, and now it's my new kind of kitchen B&A. Save to the same thing over what I originally created. Why not? I like this better. And now I can go onto Facebook and upload it from my cover sheet. I can also use this kind of before and after side by side to put it on the bottom of my portfolio page if I want below my slideshow I like the look of slideshow but some people like the side by side I might also give it as a blog you know title you know image on a blog these are the kind of things people like to pin so I might even ask my friends and clients to pin it uh, so that it kind of goes more viral and there's a lot of different ways I can use this so when you save this you should have a folder on your computer that's kind of your best work and and then displaying your best work as best as you can so it's not enough just to have the photo edit the photos clean them up put them side by side have different ways you can do it um, even in PicMonkey I could even decide to frame this so that's another thing you can do a lot of people ask you, how do you do a frame? This whole thing frames it, right? It looks pretty nice. I can cancel that. There's a lot of different ways. I can drop shadow it. I love the way a drop shadow looks when it's on a website. And then if I'm going to just go through all of the great things about uh, PicMonkey, you can do textures, which I've used um, for buttons and things, which I think look really good. And there's just something weird and dark about PicMonkey. They like Halloween themes even when it's not Halloween it's not Hall <laughs> right now I'm in May doing this video but they like Halloween and they like spooky fonts and all of that which is fine so there's have fun with PicMonkey this isn't just about your home photos although I think this looks great side by side but it's also about the way you make your buttons the way you, the way you look professionally and also the way you would take your own photo so now I'm going to show you really quickly how I'm just going to take this and put it on my Facebook cover sheet, but there's a lot of other ways I could have done it as well. So here I am in Facebook, and here's my new cover sheet, and I like the way it looks. I might have to change that one too, but that's a whole other video. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Hope you enjoyed the how-to.